Welcome, I am Janak Goyal and in this section I will review some images of sonographic pathology of ankle and foot which I have seen in my practice. Now here is an image of an ankle joint effusion. If you look at this image, the image shows an extremely distended ankle joint capsule and here is your tibia and here is the entire ankle joint capsule attaching to the neck of the talus and what you see you see some anechoic and some hypoechoic areas indicative of a complex suffusion and the differential diagnosis of a complex suffusion includes infection hemorrhage inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis crystal deposits PVMS, intraarticular air and synovial osteochondromatosis and aspiration of this joint and examination under polarized light microscope showed needle shaped negatively by represent crystals consistent with gout. Now here is an ultrasound image of a patient who presented with ankle and foot swelling. The my clinical impression was the ankle joint fusion but the sonographic examination proved that my clinical impression was wrong and the patient had an isolated effusion of the telocalcaneo navicular joint in this trike you see this here is the telocalcaneo navicular joint and the effusion projecting towards the tibiotalar joint now blind palpation guided aspiration of this joint inserting a needle into the tibiotalar joint would have missed this effusion and resulted in a dry tap. This 54 year old woman with the swelling on the dorsum of her right foot was sent for evaluation for possible gout or septic arthritis. The ultrasound examination showed a fluctuant swelling with a positive power Doppler signal and here you see the compression and the fluctuation of this swelling indicative of a subcutaneous abscess and the normal appearing joints of the foot deep to the abscess. The palpation guided blind aspiration of the joint through the abscess would have planted the infection in the joint and resulted in a bad clinical outcome which was prevented with the proper in-office use of ultrasound. Here is this 40 year old man with pain and swelling of right ankle for 3 weeks and the sonographic examination showed an isolated effusion in the pronius brevis tendon sheet. The short axis of pronius brevis, pronius longus and here is the long axis of pronius brevis attaching to the tuberosity of the 5th metatarsal bone and here the effusion on the pronius brevis tendon sheet. Here is one of my patients with long standing rheumatoid arthritis. She has been on multiple medications including biologics, methotrexate. She is a 48 year old woman. Now she comes in with isolated pain and swelling of right ankle for 3 weeks and the sonographic examination of this patient showed an isolated tenosynovitis of the pronius longus tendon sheath. Now here is your brevis which is anterior and here is your longus which is posterior and here is the long axis of the pronius longus on the uh, cuboid bone crossing deep into the foot. Let's look at the Achilles tendon and uh, let's look at the multiple kind of pathological lesions which are encountered in the Achilles tendon and here is your Achilles tendon shows a hypoechoic and anechoic lesions in the Achilles tendon at the attachment and the Achilles tendon is thickened at the attachment and here is the short axis view of the Achilles tendon similarly showing a different kind of lesions which are some hypoechoic and anechoic lesions consistent with Achilles tendinopathy and tears within the tendon and here is another patient who has a tophaceous gout with a huge tophus sitting on the posterior aspect of the Achilles tendon giving in a posterior acoustic shadow and uh, nothing much could be seen due to the tophus. And here is your Achilles tendon, looks like the Achilles tendon is torn but no, this is just a shadow from that 
deep, thick tophus, and the Achilles tendon cannot be viewed deep to that tophus. And here is another image of an Achilles tendon at the attachment, looking at the calcification at the attachment of the Achilles tendon, the so-called calcaneal spurs, this long axis view of the tendon, and here is your short axis view of the same tendon. Here is another patient with pain and swelling on the posterior aspect of the left ankle. On a clinical examination, it is noted to be a huge swelling of the Achilles tendon as compared to the right ankle. Now, the sonographic examination showed a thickening and a widening of the Achilles tendon proximal to the attachment to the calcaneus, and the tendon is also hypoechoic, anechoic. If you're looking at, and here is a short axis view of the same tendon consistent with Achilles tendinopathy. Here is another patient who came with a pain and swelling on the posterior aspect of the ankle. The sonographic examination showed a normal appearing Achilles tendon. Here is the starting of the Achilles tendon and going across and here is the short axis view of the Achilles tendon. But the appearance, the cobblestone appearance of the Kager's fat pad was uh, consistent with the cellulitis in the Kager's fat pad. Here is another patient who came with pain and swelling on the posterior aspect of the ankle and was noted to have tenderness at the attachment of the Achilles tendon and anterior to the Achilles tendon. The sonographic examination showed the hypoechoic widening of the retrocalcaneal bursa consistent with retrocalcaneal bursitis. The retrocalcaneal bursa is a coma shaped structure deep to the Achilles tendon between the Achilles tendon and the superior aspect of the calcaneus. Here are some images of patients with pain and swelling of the MTP joints indicative of gout. What you see here, there is a deposition of a layer of fluid crystals on the cartilage surface and on the ultrasound image we call it a double contour sign which is about 90% specific for the diagnosis of gout. Here are some other images of the tophaceous deposits, some soft, some hard. Here is a hard deposit with posterior acoustic shadow. Here is another phase of gout with uh, tophaceous deposits and multiple erosions on the MTP joint of multiple patients. Now this patient had a large fluctuant swelling of his first MTP joint with snowstorm-like crystal deposits in the MTP joint. 5 ml of purulent material was aspirated. The examination of the fluid under polarized light microscope showed no cells but all crystals and negative cultures. The synovial lining of the MTP joint is reflected proximal to the metatarsal head which is the site of accumulation of fluid during the MTP joint pathology is associated with joint effusion. Here is the long axis view of the first MTP joint and here is the short axis. What you see here is the extension of the recess proximal to the metatarsal head. As always stated, the scanning should always be done in long axis and in short axis. Here is this big osteophyte on the metatarsal head in the long axis scan which gives an appearance of a free floating foreign body in the MTP joint space on the short axis scan. This patient was sent to me for evaluation of first MTP gout, which was getting worse despite the adequate dose of endomethacine and colchicine for treatment of gout. The sonographic examination of the MTP joint showed a normal MTP, but markedly hyperechoic subcutaneous fat with hypoechoic septa indicative of uh, subcutaneous edema. Patient responded very well to the treatment for cellulitis with amoxicillin and globulinic acid. This is a patient with severe pain and tenderness at the bottom of her heel. The sonography showed markedly thick and hypoechoic 
oh, a quick plantar fascia at the attachment of the calcaneus. She responded very well to the glucocorticoid injection and percutaneous needling of the plantar fascia.